on large transportation projects, we can have a situation where we have miles of roadside ditches. And designing these ditches and re then revising the design of those ditches as the project progresses can be an enormously time consuming, consuming task. So let's take a look at this. Here we have a typical roadside ditch, a simple, simple ro uh, roadway corridor template. And the ditch is immediately adjacent to the toe of the roadway fill slope with a five foot bench between the toe of the fill and the ditch for slope. Often the roadway is modeled by roadway design staff who then produce cross sections and then deliver those cross sections to the drainage staff who design their ditches and then manually update those cross sections to show those ditches. This traditional approach has two significant disadvantages. First of all, it's very time consuming and tedious. Second of all, it does not accommodate revisions to the roadway model and cross sections. If the roadway is revised, then the ditch needs to be revised and all those cross section modifications to show the ditches need to be redone. With Open Roads Designer, there's a much better way to do this. And this approach involves two different things. First, designing a ditch as a corridor model, which makes revising the ditches much, much easier. And secondly, taking advantage of the ability of Open Roads to create civil rules or dependencies so that changes in the roadway model are automatically transferred to the ditch model. So let's look at this example. This ditch has been modeled as a corridor. The bottom width of the ditch is something that we would like to vary. Right now, it's a constant six foot bottom width dimension. Well, the ditch dimensions, the, the, the width of the bench, the fore slope, the bottom width, the side slope or the back slope, all of these things have been designed or set as parametric constraints in the corridor model. So let's take a look at that. We'll open up our corridor. Go to parametric constraints. And we see that we have a value for parametric constraint of bottom width divided by two. And we've also have a parametric constraint for the bench width. So I want to change this. Right now, we have a constant six foot bottom width for the entire length of the ditch. I want to change this to six feet towards the end of the ditch and then have a transition section in the middle. So I'll put in my transition section. Let's zoom out so you can see these changes as they occur. They're live as they happen. So there's the transition I just created. Now I'm gonna to go to here. You can see this is all ditches updating immediately as I make these changes. You can do that for any part of this design. As well as changing these dimensions and having them automatically reflect in the plan profile and cross section, I can also change the the profile of the stitch. So let's take a look at that. So here's my ditch profile, and this is also controlled as part of the corridor. So I'll go to my point control. Right now, the last leg of this is looking a little bit shallow. I want to steepen up, steepen that up, make it a little more consistent. I want to change the grade of that last leg. Make it 6%. Watch the profile, but also watch on the left side what happens to the corridor model. So the profile is updated, and you can see that the grading of the ditch has also been updated. Best of all, this ditch corridor model was tied to the roadway corridor model, which is in a different DGN file. So let's go to that roadway corridor model and revise it and see what happens to our ditch model. So here's the ditch corridor model, and this is now referenced this is a reference file to the roadway corridor, and you can see the ditch here. Let's change the profile of this, of this roadway. And 
that will then change the grading of the road. So let's take this. And now I'm going to increase the fill of the road. Really push this road out. So let's go back now and take a look at those cross sections. You can see that it doesn't match anymore. I've lost my bench. There's a conflict now between the ditch design and the roadway design. So now that ditch design needs to be revised. If we were using the old school approach, we'd have to manually update all our cross sections for those ditch revisions. So let's go back to the DGN file for the ditch model and see what happens. Now I haven't touched the screen and you can see that there's an overlap here. I'm going to just do a quick refresh and, see, and watch the ditch update. There it is, boom. The roadway corridor was revised, the toe slope shifted outward, and because the, road, the ditch corridor is tied to that roadway corridor, it shifted with it. And you can see now that that ditch shifted over, and so now we have our bench back. So in summary, don't do ditches the hard way. Take advantage of these tools and eliminate those time-consuming cross-section edits.